Hi, this is Maurice Momartz and Joel Otero commenting on sliding genioplasty. We have set up different cameras so we can toggle between different views. And we start the surgery by rubbing the lips with a steroid cream in order to protect them, keep them soft. Very often you can find the labial branch of the mental nerve shining through the mucous membrane and you can mark it out, left and right. I like to make an incision in the middle of the lip in order to avoid scar bands in the vestibule and the incision has a shape of an inverted W, the so-called royal incision. But in this case, as you can see, the labial branch is just running below this uh, design. So I have to make a new one closer to the vestibule. We provide the, the local anesthetic with a disposable syringe on which is mounted a spinal needle, a Whitaker spinal needle, which has a bullet shaped tip. For that reason, it cannot cause any echimosis, it cannot cut through arteries or veins. You can see that I deliver depots very close to the mandibular border, infiltrating the tunnel that we will make in a superiosteal fashion. Of course also just below the incision line. A little bit of a super wet technique here. 50% lidocaine with adrenaline, 2%, 50% of saline. A blade 15 cuts through the mucous membrane, exposes the salivary glands. Sharp dissection here, taking care for any small nerve branches. You can also take a Metzenbaum scissors, of course. Once approaching the mentalis muscle, I make a straight cut through the muscles, leaving a stump attached to the bone, the origo. And with a pyrostial elevator, I dissect down in the midline. Chin retractor. The pyrostial scraper. Is tunneling there. I'm looking for the mental foramen. Try to stay about 8 mm below it. Of course, I have the radiographs, the CPCT, the OPG at hand. And these are helpful uh, to uh, identify the position of the foramen. The mental nerve, of course, and the tunnel.
preparing the synthesis for a midline marking with a, a small but sharp Lindemann drill. Make this marking long enough, especially when you do chin impacts and surgery. You may often find that the cephalot extension um, is not visible anymore after the impaction. The 90 degree curved tip of the periosteal scraper is protecting the marginal branch of the facial nerve. And I'm now marking the osteotomy line with a short, thick Lindemann. A thick one because uh, the fine tip may fracture and you will only retrieve the fracture tip in the post-op radiograph and not during surgery anymore. So it's better to be less elegant and use a sturdier drill bit to mark the osteotomy line left and now right. As you can see I will end a little bit too high and I will have to adjust with my reciprocating saw. Protection, protection of the lower border. Putting the periosteal scraper a little bit oblique so that it protects also the mental nerve. And the curved tip around the mandibular border is protecting the marginal branch of the facial nerve. The reciprocating saw with disposable blades is used. Now in a reversed fashion, coming up and cutting the mandibular border. I will show the same on the left side. Excuse me, on the right side. Approach from Buckley or labially. And then reverting the uh, blade and coming from the back to the front. Cutting the mandible border on the right side. An osteotome with a little bit of torquing movement mobilizes the chin segment and advances it. I'm putting on a Dingman bone holding forceps. get control over the segment and I will now measure the advancement which is very rarely more than six millimeter because when you advance more the chin may look 
very artificial, like an implant. It's especially the transition at the cut, at the border, that then uh, provides a concave soft tissue profile once you advance more. I use these slotted plates because they allow me to adjust very easily without removing the screws just by untightening them and I can reposition transversely or vertically, of course not sagittally. They are bent according to the distance of advancement. I should have drilled first the, uh, the upper hole though, in the fixed segment, that's an orthopedic principle. And I use 7mm screws there to, um, to fix the plate to the, to the bone. One point eight millimeter drill bit in the chin. Screws of two point three millimeter diameter, outer diameter. And uh, one point five millimeter of core diameter. One at each side. The plates are positioned between the lateral incisor and the canine tooth because there is a triangle of bone available and the screws can be positioned in the way that they will not jeopardize the APCs of the lower incisors which may be the case when you use just one plate in the midline. Two plates left and right also allow to suspend a cutgenioglossus muscle in case of chin impaction. A cutgenioglossal muscle or a stripped one, it doesn't matter, these muscles need to be resuspended or um, there may be a dead space that can accumulate a hematoma with rise of the floor of the mouth. In this case, of course, in a simple advancement, it's not necessary to resuspend the muscles of the floor of mouth. We just have to take care of the reconstruction of the mentalis muscles. I have tried many years ago to simplify this by making one midline incision and tunneling left and right under the muscles, even with the use of the endoscope, it, uh, it was not very satisfactory. First there was the midline plate it was quite difficult to check the rotation of the boomerang and uh, in the end 
For patients, the morbidity was more or less the same as with this limited incision. It is necessary, however, to reconstruct the mentalis muscles. If you don't do, you will have chin ptosis. I can assure you. This is a complication that we have seen many times in the beginning in our own patients, but then from other centers as well. These days, in this phase, we go for intraoperative CBCT to check for the symmetry left and right at the mandibular border. We will not show the CBCT, but I will explain you about the T seal here and the hydroxyapatite granules that we mix together to become kind of a moldable, moldable uh, mass that uh, is then used to cover the defects in the transition left and right at the border but also, as you can see here, in the midline. This is not always necessary, and especially uh, before muscle reconstruction, you may have the impression that the mentolabial fold is too deep, but that impression changes once you have the muscles reconstructed. It's important though to get the mental labial fold high, very high. It should not be in the middle of the chin, it should be higher. And that's the reason why I've put here the extra mass on top of the step. Ficro 3 now to reconstruct the muscles. Take care there to take the stump of the mentalis muscle and not to suture the orbicularis or his muscle. Immediately you can see this lifting effect in the menton area. And we change now for a ficral 4O rapida. I start suturing in the middle. Three triangular flaps, of course, in a W incision. That's the middle one. And then a running one from, from left to right. Just last year we stopped uh, putting a pressure bandage after closure because there was no scientific evidence of its uh, um, advantages and uh, indeed um, we did not experience any more edema or hematoma. So I will finish up suturing and uh, we hope you enjoyed this uh, Brussels Classic video on sliding genioplasty.